Anyone who has ever watched some cheesy B-movie on sci-fi or some aspiring college kid's weird and stilted little video probably never would have thought that anything would ever come from the directors responsible for those movies. Well, as we'll see in today's video, perhaps these now famous directors shouldn't have been written off quite so quickly. Number 10. Bedhead – Robert Rodriguez from the creator of the Spy Kids franchise, Sin City, Grindhouse, and Machete comes this shock film that he made for $800 back in the very early 90s. It would win numerous awards that would help Rodriguez finance his indie hit El Mariachi. The plot of this movie features a little girl with a jerk brother who gets telekinetic powers from a head injury that he accidentally inflicts on her. Her first order of business is getting rid of that enormous hair spike that he has. And the funny thing is, this is probably the most mature movie that Rodriguez has ever made. Number 9. Timepiece – Jim Henson Having six years of experience making the program Sam and Friends, which is basically proto-Muppets to the extent that a Kermit who looks and talks the same was in it, from 1955 to 1961, Jim Henson was in a position to make his first movie a bit more polished than most. Finished in 1966, it was released to theaters as a short film. Looking at the preview, you can tell that the movie is all strangely symbolic of the stresses of modern life, although why Henson went to the trouble of being so abstract about it is anyone's guess. This movie was an Academy Award nominee for the Best short film of the year. Number 8. Whatever Happens to Mason Reese by Brett Ratner. Brett Ratner is definitely more powerful than respected or even liked. He is the guy that made those grating rush hour movies, that unpopular X-Men 3 movie, and Tower Heist. Watching this movie will make you wonder how he ever got so far. While the premise of Child Actor has cute screen persona but is unpleasant behind the scenes was kind of even old at that time, this movie takes it in weird directions when a little person shows up with a samurai sword. Number 7. Piranha 2 by James Cameron James Cameron may be the man who directed the highest grossing movie of all time, which is Avatar, if you hadn't heard, and the second highest grossing movie of all time as well, that's Titanic. However, he is never going to outrun the fact that his first credit as director was for a movie about flying piranha fish. At least Cameron has a sense of humor about it. He said in a 2008 interview that he is confident that it's the best flying piranha movie ever made. And so it is, Cameron. For now. Number 6. Look at Life. George Lucas. Technically an animated movie, this project of Lucas's from 1966, when he was at the University of Southern California, consists of nothing more than variously mildly evocative photos of the time set to drum music with a vague and arrogant will we survive message at the end. Number 5. Stalk of the Celery by Tim Burton Made for the California Institute of the Arts in 1979, it's neat to see how Burton's style of character design had pretty much crystallized even then. Burton himself wasn't too happy with this one, dismissing the movie in later interviews as stupid, but it did draw the attention of Disney Corporation and essentially it got his career started. Weirdly, it was presumed lost for decades but then showed up on Spanish television. Burton was probably glad it was this movie that was the one to reappear and not that other one. Number 4. Mayday – The Crumbling of a Documentary by Kevin Smith A documentary about a transsexual singer. That's what this 1992 movie Kevin Smith and longtime producer associate Scott Mosier made for the University of Vancouver, or at least that's what they were supposed to make. Instead, the advocate of slacker filmmaking did what he did best and half-assed the project into being about his own failure. Although in the movie, it's also implied that the subject was uncooperative, but Smith and Mosier probably thought the movie would seem funnier if they implied the failure was all their own faults. The documentary also has the distinction of probably being the first one to feature outtakes during the end credits. Number 3. Bring Me the Head of Charlie Brown by Jim Reardon you might not know the name Jim Reardon, but does a certain show entitled The Simpsons ring a bell? Jim Reardon was the director of 41 of the best regarded episodes by both casual and serious fans. If that's not enough for you, consider that he was one of the co-writers for the Pixar hit Wall-E. All of that came from a guy whose first movie looks exactly like some unpleasant viral video that a 13-year-old would write. The fact it was the thing that got him the director job for The Simpsons could just serve as a lesson to any of you arty types who really want to influence the world. Number 2. Battle Beyond the Sun – Francis Ford Coppola Back before his Godfather franchise and Apocalypse Now phase, Coppola had to work for Roger Corman. 
which is at least a few steps below, starting at the bottom. His first credited job was this 1962 film, and he didn't even have the satisfaction of directing the entire film. The movie is mostly a big recut of a Soviet movie from the space race era called The Heaven's Call. It features numerous scenes played repeatedly, redubbed in multiple different ways, and a randomly spliced in space monster fight. All those choices would have been handy when he made Bram Stoker's Dracula. Number 1. Bad Taste by Peter Jackson you wouldn't expect a movie about human-eating aliens that descend to Earth to collect samples for a fast-food franchise to be weird, but that's just the surprising touch that a young Peter Jackson brought to this 1987 film. The shoot spanned all of four years because Jackson didn't bother writing a script until he decided to rap. In addition to constant gunplay, mountains of gore, and some very non-PC throwaway jokes, the movie contains probably the strangest example of a director acting in his or her own movie. Jackson not only plays one of the aliens, but he also plays one of the humans who is part of a strike force sent to stop them. The human character then goes on to torture the alien character, which is something you just don't see in Woody Allen movies. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. Don't forget to subscribe. Brand new videos every day of the week. And as always, thank you for watching.